Hello everyone, welcome back to Marion's World for another episode of the Stitch Journal. I've got three really lovely stitches to show you today that are going to add to the lovely colourful tree that I'm making on my stitch page. Uh, two are a variation of things that's already been done. Uh, so just uh, complicating the stitch ever so slightly to make it look lovely and an introduction to long and short stitch with quite a simple bit of well, I always call it silk shading and nowadays I know people call it thread painting. And I'm just going to cut you straight into it. So I've got uh, six strands of this lovely brown in my needle. And I've got a decent eye and a sharp-ish point, but it's quite a short needle today. And I'm going to do a variation of stem stitch. So once you've got your basic stitches in your little toolkit of what you can do, there are so many variations that just take each stitch to a different level. And this is a really nice variation on stem stitch. It's called knotted stem stitch. And so I've already done a, a couple of stitches. So I'm about to go forward for the stem stitch. I'll keep hold of my loop till I come back up to the previous stitch and pull through and instead of going immediately forward to do the next stem stitch I'm going to wrap these two stitches beforehand and so you can see where my needle is going under there it's going under the previous stitch and the one I've just made and I'm going to pull that through and I'm going to do it again so I wrap those two stitches twice and then I go to do the next stitch. So leaping forward half the, um, the same length again and back up. And always keeping your thread on the same side all the time. Uh, today that means I'm holding the thread upwards. So I've made my stitch. I come back to where both of those stitches go and go underneath and underneath again. And then leap forward and all this is doing is it's adding this extra step but it makes a really lovely knotted um, textured stem stitch it's just really nice it sort of thickens the line up as well go down now you see I've pulled that down straight away and because of the knot you'll find, can you see how they've laid alongside each other? So really I need to keep the loop up before you pull down so that your needle comes up on the same side all the time which for me is below the loop. And then wrap twice through once Twice. Pull it forward, and then in this way, I'm going to use, I'm going to work right to the end of the stem. Once and twice, and this is just a really nice variation. It's it's very satisfying to see the thicker line. And that little knot, which is, is, is not really a knot, it's a double wrap, even though it's called knotted, it's actually a double wrap. You can see I've finished that beautiful scrolling stem off. And I've just finished off with a couple of little twigs, just with plain stem stitch. But what a beautiful, beautiful, graceful stem that is. I've got another stem here, and I'm going to show you another variation. And this variation is a variation on chain stitch and I'm using two colours and it's like this stitch is like magic. So I've got two contrasting colours. I've got a dark brown and a peach. And really that's just, uh, for one thing, this is the whole point of this stitch is that there are two different colours that will contrast well. And I've now got equal lengths of both threads in my needle. So I've swapped my needle to a one with a larger eye. Remember, you, 
you're matching the eye to the thread and the point to the fabric. So I've got a larger eye to get, I've got 12 strands through that needle now. I've already made the first stitch, but this is how it goes. So I'm going to go and do a normal chain stitch by going down in the loop and making my stitch. But this time, instead of all of these threads going round, I'm just going to take the peach one because I've already made a brown stitch. So I'm going to just pull that brown thread out of the way and just loop the peach one around and pull it up. And just be aware what your threads are doing. You don't want them to get um, tangled. But as I pull that peach one in, the brown one is left hanging here. And I can just take hold of this brown thread and pull it and it'll disappear underneath. So then you go to make your next stitch. You don't have to keep pulling these threads even because each stitch takes up the next thread. So I'll go down to make my chain stitch. Up to bring the loop and this time I'll put the brown loop around it. Just make sure my threads are going nicely. The brown loop goes in and the peach one disappears. Now I'm doing this quite large to make it obvious what's happening. You don't have to do it this big. I might whip this afterwards because I'm trying to just make it obvious for you. So peach one's going round next. Pull it. Keep pulling on that brown because it hasn't gone in. There we go. Next one. Need a brown stitch next. Pull it through. And the peach one will just disappear underneath. And it's lovely. It's called Two Colour Chain. Um, I used this before doing the moth feelers. It makes a nice checky line. And I want to show you this done with a finer amount of threads because I think normally I would have just used, I still, I wouldn't have wanted to use six strands of each one. So here I'll just take the peach one. And the next one I'll take the brown one. you find it easier to hold your threads together you take your stitch put the brown one on just pull through put the peach one round the needle and it's just really pretty it would make beautiful edges, edges for anything. It would be lovely. It's, a, it's not one I see used very much, I don't think. Although I'm not somebody who's looking around on the internet all the time. So maybe people are using it that I just don't realise. Pull on the peach one and pull on the brown one. There we go. And then I'll take both threads to the back finish off like that. It's a really really lovely stitch. I'm just showing you the same stitch in half the amount of threads. So I've got three threads of brown and three threads of green to make six all together and you'll see what a difference it is to make just tinier stitches. It ends up looking so pretty. Just make sure that each opposite loop doesn't get taken. But other than that, you're doing a normal chain. Now this stitch is definitely easier in a hoop because you sort of need both hands to be manipulating the thread. I'm going to put one more brown one there and finish off.
next uh, stitch that I'm going to do today is long and short stitch and it's just going to be the beginnings of how to do what I always knew as silk shading or just long and short and I've got three different colours out because I'm going to be doing a leaf so I'm going from the light colour to a medium colour to a dark colour and I'll be using three strands of each one. So I've now got three strands of the very light green in my needle and I'm going to start at the top point and I'm going to do each half separately and what I've done is I've just drawn the way the veins would be on the leaf I'm not going to embroider these veins at all it's just a way of helping you decide where the stitches the way the stitches will lie so you're always thinking what does the leaf look like in real life where are the leaf veins going and or where is the fur going or where is the or where are the feathers going whatever they look like that's the way your stitches need to lie and so I've put them on it helps me but also helps you see how I'm doing this stitching and I'm just going to come down from the point firstly so long and short it's just a variation of satin stitch really nothing more complicated than that but the main thing is that some stitches are long some stitches are short it sounds obvious I'll do, I'll do this side first and sometimes when you see it in books it's very brick like there's a one here there's a one there there's a one here there's a one there and they're very regular but if you're trying to embroider something natural you don't want things to look quite as regimented and so maybe it would be more accurately be termed like stitches of varying length stitch because that's really what you're aiming for you're not aiming for something that's going to be that length all the time or that length all the time you put the stitch wherever it needs to be and so this next one I'm still aiming for this middle rib if I line my thread in I can see that it's going on a slightly different angle than that one so that one if they were going in the same direction that one would go there but that would be no good to me I need to aim for the middle so I'm going to aim for the middle and just take it in and the next stitch comes up I'm just going outside my line because I put the line back in with pencil so you could see it better and I've done a long stitch there I'm going to do a shorter one it doesn't matter where as long as it's short in some way maybe a millimeter about two threads apart on the outside this stitch I still have to aim for the middle now if I put it here you can see that I'm not in that direction so I need to sort of aim so that it sort of starts to come round so I'm going to put it here somewhere I'll go just short of the middle because I know that I'm putting another two colours in and up on the edge so the next one's a little shorter and then I'm going to just put one right in the bottom of there before I come out for the lobe of this leaf aiming for the middle but I'm stopping short of the middle and then I start to come out so I'm going to come out a little bit more for the lobe of this leaf and I can see where things have to aim for and so now I don't particularly I've done a short stitch there but I don't particularly want to make a great big long one so I'm going to do a shorter one just up here just because you've done a long doesn't mean it has to be short the next time it just it's the general sense of stitches of varying lengths I'll take my next long one down on the line I've drawn just because that's helping me keep the stitches straight And a short one moving down nicely just as the width of the threads apart coming down don't want them to be too crowded I want room for the other stitches to go and in this way I'm going to work right the way around the edge of the leaf 
sometimes they're going to be a lot shorter than the ones before or a lot longer and sometimes they're not. Well you can see if you if you haven't done long and short before can you see how much the angle has already changed from up there because every stitch is just going to be slightly different as you come round this leaf and if it helps you to put in those lines before you start so you can keep a sense of where your stitches need to lie then just do that put those lines in it doesn't matter it's all going to be covered up by your, by your stitching whatever helps you make that I'm going to I've done a long, a short, I'm just going to put another short one in here because if I do a long, I feel as if I'm going to get crowded a bit as I come round. I'm actually going to put another shorter one in there because in the end the perimeter of your shape has the longest length and all the other stitches have to get into it. I'm nearly at the end of this bit of thread. I want to finish this bit of thread off and finish the rest of the perimeter in this colour. So I've completed my outline now and you can see the difference in the angles from the first ones that went in and the angles gradually changed, they were all heading for the middle every time. But when I came to the bottom I don't really want these to angle up like that because the, the leaf grows out that way so they've been more, they kept slanting to the bottom a bit more. And another tip I would say, especially on the very first go round, is not to crowd your stitches too much. You need room for the next layer of stitches to go in. And so now I've got three strands of my medium colour. And again, I'm going to work both halves independently. And I'm just going to come up where the short, there's a short stitch there, I can just see it. And you, so you're coming up in between the stitches you've already put where there's a bit of a gap. But if there's no gap, it doesn't matter because these stitches will be longer. So I take that down to the middle. But I'm aware that I want to put a third colour in here. So I'm just going to keep thinking about that. And I'm going to work around the outside again, in from the outside but up into those previous stitches. So that's been quite long. I'm going to put a shorter stitch in here. But now you've got the you've got the angles of your previous stitches to help you. And so if you don't see a gap, you don't need to put a stitch in. So I'm going to come round within the perimeter and again keep angling those stitches on the same way that the first ones were. Moving round I'm going to come down to the middle sometimes but not all and sometimes I work the other way so here I don't particularly I don't particularly want to make a great big long stitch right up to here and waste all that on the back but sometimes sometimes it's easier to work from the inside out so actually I'm just going to make a tiny stitch to there and I'm going to take that stitch outwards to where I see the gap and it doesn't matter which way you work it, they will look the same. You work it whatever makes you comfortable and whatever gives you the look that you want in the end. So I'm not taking that long stitch not quite to the middle. And I'm going to come there and take that stitch out up here. Now there's a gap there. I might fill it in, I might not. I'm going to take that one there first and have a look. And yes, I will. I want to take that one. And if you end up splitting the previous stitches, that's that's fine. It'll make for a more shaded if, uh, effect if you do split them. So I don't think it really matters. 
I'm just working my way nicely around keeping the stitches again in the same plane the same angle some are going almost to the middle and some are not I'll work back out for this one you can see the space there I'm going to jump over take that one quite low and I think I need a one there so I feel that's a I feel this is too big a gap so I'm going to just come backwards a minute and put that one in put another one in there a little short one and really you can decide how much of each colour you need to be if you just want a, a very thin layer of the lighter colour around the edge you can do quite small stitches and if you want it to be the main colour and just the dark colour quite small in the middle it's up to you I think the best thing to say is experiment and see what you want to do and, and, and do some leaves differently so that you can actually appreciate the length, how the length of your stitches and the amount you put in changes the effect that you get I've worked my way back down to the bottom and I'm not going to work up I'm going to finish there and start again at the top and work the top down again I've got the rest of the middle colour on and so I've got the three strands of the very dark colour and I'm actually going to start on the middle and move outwards and there's enough stitches there now I don't really need to think is there a space I just need to put it wherever I think the stitch should be so I'm going to go up the middle line here and just go through it'll be splitting some stitches it doesn't matter it's just it's going to look right and I will definitely work both ways sometimes I'll come up within the stitches and work down to the middle and sometimes I'll work from the middle upwards and I'm actually going to work both sides together now because I only have this little bit to fill in and it just I think it's nicer if you can just work the whole stitch together just supporting my fabric actually and just coming at wherever you feel you want to put that dark colour and there's a tiny space there I can see so I'm just going to come up again in there and fill in that little space with a short stitch and there's the space gone and I think that's what's nice about working both sides at the same time at this stage but I'm still making all of the stitches go in the same plane they were before I'm going to take a bit of a longer one there but it's not concerning me sort of what length the stitches are as long as they are going within the stitches that are previous and I'm not making anything look funny I'm just aware of the plane that the stitches are lying in the angle and that I'm coming down absolutely to the middle every single stitch now there's a bit of a space there I'll use that come down to the previous one and I've seen this called thread painting now and to be honest that's not a term I have used and in fact it's not a one I even heard of till recently this was always just called long and short or silk shading and it was called silk shading regardless of whether you were using silk or cotton and most of mine's always just been stranded cotton or pearl threads uh, stranded cotton is just the absolute best thing for this but this thread painting I can see why and it definitely feels like you're painting with your thread but it just, I don't know, I think it's a newish term. I'll say that and somebody's going to say, no, it's not, it's been going for years. But I just sort of, I'm quite old fashioned 
and I wasn't looking around to see what anybody else was saying. And so it, it's a new term to me. So as you can see, I'm just working down this middle. Sometimes working in and down to the middle. And I'll just show you, sometimes coming up at the middle and working out. And both ways will work. And when you're finished, you won't know which one you did because they look the same. You can even cross your stitches over at the bottom in the same manner that fishbone or the leaf stitch was crossed. And you'll get the little woven middle bit. That'll be perfectly fine. In fact, there's no wrong way. When I've got gaps, I just go back to fill them in. And I'm not particularly bothered about tiny gaps on the actual middle because I'm going to go back up there with either a chain stitch or a running stitch or something. So I don't mind leaving that. But don't get too hung up about whether it's a long stitch or a short stitch. The stitches of varying lengths and the length varies as to where you're putting it and what you want it to do. And once you're using more than just a couple of colours, just putting them in among each other will shade and uh, give your embroidery some beauty. You could put a cluster of leaves on a lovely little bag that you were giving to someone as a present. Two or three little oak leaves and a little acorn. It looks so beautiful. Oh, I might put an oak leaf on. Actually, I do need to put an oak leaf on. I'll think of another stitch for an oak leaf for next week. And by the way, thank you for all the lovely comments I've been getting about my lovely colourful tree trunk. And what amazed me is the people who, uh, who've never had a thread jar. So uh, my thread jar now needs really um, replenishing because I used so much of it in my tree trunk. But I'm pleased you liked it. I think I'll work it down with a little stem stitch. So we've got a nice central rib. And just come right down over the top of everything else. And I'm going to carry this green right down to the trunk because I've got the thread in my needle and I can just carry on with the stem stitch. Just finished off, that piece there can now go on my tangle because it's long enough to be used again. And I'm ready to do another stitch, another leaf. So I hope I hope that was helpful to see how that came together. And now I'm going to do another one somewhere else in just a nice rounded shape. And I'll show you that at the end. Well, here's my tree so far. I've added another branch of the knotted stem stitch, but just in a variegated yarn, sorry, a variegated thread, and it's really lovely. I hope you try that. And I have also added another long and short stitch uh, silk shading leaf. I did this one in autumn colours. So I've got an orange, a brown and a dark brown, and I've just decided to add some extra little running stitch tendrils with this the thread that was left over. And there's another uh, fishbone or leaf stitch leaf here. You can really see the woven middle from that one. And so it's coming along. And my tree is going to be very colourful. Definitely.
and so I hope you're all enjoying uh, making this page more lovely filling stitches next week and maybe maybe some more branches too well I hope you will really enjoy uh, practicing those stitches um, the knotted stem stitch is a particular favourite it's not very much of an extra step with the two wraps but it makes quite a big difference so I hope you'll enjoy putting some branches on in a bit of knotted stem stitch the two colour chain is just magic and the first time you do that and you see the, the, the spare thread getting pulled underneath and leaving you with just the alternate colours all the time well, I remember the first time I did that and it was just doing it for ages because I thought it was just so magical. So that long and short stitch leaf or silk shaded leaf or thread painted leaf, whichever term you want to use, that's sort of an introduction into how to do that type of lying the stitches, how to do them in the right plane, which is the angle that they're all going to go in. So I expect to see that coming back in over the next weeks as take that um, take that technique further and do things that need finer threads or just a more I don't know just take the technique further anyway so I hope you get away with that one really nicely thank you for all the lovely comments about my tree um, people who who have never kept their threads before or um, didn't really know what a thread jar was and then just got a surprise when I was putting all these threads in a big pile on my bit of material. Um, I think I'm going to show you my thread jar. So this is, this, is, this is what I call my thread jar. This is separate from the tangle. They just all have names here. So the tangle is threads I can use again. So that is threads that are long enough. If I pick something out of there. So because I'm never bothered about what number or what have you of a thread, I just look for colours. So if I decide I want to use a yellow, there's one, there's a yellow. I've obviously considered that was long enough for me to use again. So if I need a few stitches of yellow, there it is. If I want to pick a pale green out, there's one coming. Now that is, that's obviously a length I've cut off and I've just used, well there's two strands there left, sorry three strands there left. So I'll have used the other three strands in something and then it just gets put on top. They never really get in a knot, they're just all lying there waiting for me to pick them up again. So that's the tangle. The thread jar is anything that's too small to go on the tangle. So it's tiny bits of anything. I've been doing a lot of hand sewing uh, for this Sunday's video. Well, fingers crossed that I get it finished. It's not finished yet, but it's nearly there. Uh, so there's lots of sewing thread ends in here. And uh, what else is in here? There, sometimes there ends up bits of wool from the knitting, just the little snips off anything. It just goes in there. And apart from anything, it makes a really bonny, colourful, a jar to sit on my table but then I use it I use it for such things as the tree but I use it in embroidery I use them if I need to stuff something really small I just get bits out and I stuff them like a little lavender sachet I'd use this as the stuffing um, if you're a spinner you could use these and spin them into something more plain to give little flecks of colour. I've seen that done really successfully and I wish I could do it myself because if I could I'd be doing that with these. And yeah just there, there's all sorts of creative things. I will do a video on some beads because I use fabric and these together with embroidery and I'll see if I can do a tutorial on them. But anyway, that's my thread jar. I have a big thread jar because I do a lot of sewing. If you didn't do a lot of sewing, you could just have a nice little bowl or something like that. Anyway, that's by the by. I have two um, sort of announce <laughs> announcements really to tell you. The first one is that 
I have started a Ko-fi page. Now I did start it last week but I had already done my video so I hadn't recorded anything about it. But over the last, well over the last few months, some people have asked me on and off how they could support my channel. I was trying to get the shop up and running more with some things that people could actually go on and buy other than my bags. Plus I need to get the bags able to be sold outside the UK, which I'm almost there. I just I just need to ring them and ask them how to do it because I'm a bit nervous about doing it by myself. So once that's done, the bags will be available anywhere that wants to buy them. And I'm gonna learn how to do a PDF and get some of the patterns for my birds or the patterns for whatever, even just the outline drawing of the tree or anything. I'll put them up as a way of you getting hold of them. But because that's not really running very well and people were asking me how they could support the channel, I actually took, took the chance and I've started a Ko-fi page. So I'm linking that, it's on the home page and I'll put it on the description in my videos. And so thank you to the people who've already found that and actually sent me a cup of tea, which even though it's called coffee, I actually drink tea. So thank you for people who've, who've bought me a cup of tea or multiple cups of tea. I really appreciate that. It really goes a long way to helping because my videos take ages to do and I don't have, yeah, I don't have any other income really, uh, other than half of my husband's a little pension. So thank you very much for the ones who've done that already and thank you in advance to anybody who cares to do that. So that's one announcement out of the way. The other announcement is something I should have got in last week and I forgot to say it and it's that, um, where till I get the thing? So it's that the winner of the 10,000 subscriber draw whose name was Leslie Wright 9210 has not been in touch at all and I will put a little announcement in the community page a little post extra I'll do that today and she needs to get in touch if she doesn't get in touch within the next week I will have to do that draw again because it's just waiting there. I was giving plenty chance for somebody to get in touch. So Leslie Wright, 9210, you need to get in touch with me about uh, what you would like to have for your um, piece of stitchery. Otherwise, somebody else is going to get the chance. So that's really important that I said that. Thank you for all the comments I'm getting. I've been getting some wonderful comments about my uh, needle book too. Oh, which is she's in the sitting room because I've been hand sewing and I'm hoping the tutorial will be on Sunday of what I'm sewing at the minute and I have been using that so much and every time I open it up <laughs> it just thrills me to my core uh, so thank you I'm so pleased you've all appreciated it too anyway I'm going to leave it there and say bye from Marion's World happy stitching happy crafting happy happy doing the stitch journal or whatever that pleases you to do and makes you happy I hope that's what you're doing bye everyone see you next time <laughs>